It's finally here. Monster Hunter Wilds was revealed and I gotta be honest, I don't know if I've recovered yet. I sat there and watched the trailer and dissected it and analyzed it with people on stream for like two and a half hours and it's a minute and 30 long trailer. It was mind blowing. And I've collected myself enough to where I'm just gonna kind of go through the trailer, pick out some things, let's be real. If you've watched one of these analysis videos of this trailer, you've probably watched 90% of them. But regardless, let's go through, let's do this, let's pick out some things that we liked, some things that raised questions, and let's just have some fun with it. I think one of the first things that really stands out is the sheer number of monsters in each of these shots. In this shot alone, there's about 40 to 50 of these creatures, and then you still have everything going on in the background. You have a sandstorm chasing you, so they are really taking the engine and pushing it to the next level, and I love seeing that. Even having a few of these carnivorous creatures in the back is very cool because they do seem like they're bigger than a small monster. I don't know if they're strictly a large monster or what, but having multiple of those in a pack, that looks really, really good. Probably the most intriguing thing to me, and the thing that caught my interest the most, was this bird, raptor, creature mount that we're riding in this video. It's an absolutely stunning creature. It looks fantastic. The thing that jumped out to me at first was, how customizable are these going to be? Are these basically going to be our buddies? Are they strictly just a mount? Are they like a pseudo camp, mobile camp kind of thing? Regardless of what it is, we do see that, you know, it has wraps and satchels and all these things on its side. The first thing that really stood out, and thank you to everybody pointing this out to me, was that there was a light bow gun wrapped up on its side, which kind of raises a lot of questions. First thing that I'm wondering is, are we going to be able to hot swap weapons on the fly? But what it kind of tells me is that we might be going on some long ass expeditions, and I am here for it. Going back to our mount friend, one of the things that stood out as well was how it kind of has the two different modes as we're riding it. So at first, when we're weaving through the herbivores, you can see it's on two feet. And to me, it kind of seems like this is more of like a precision control mode, how it's weaving through the herbivores and like you have a really good touch on where you're going. But then as soon as it hits the gap and gets out of that herbivore pack, it drops down to all four appendages and starts speeding away. What this reminds me of is our Palamutes and Rise and how, you know, you could kind of hit that speed boost and they would go really fast, but it was a little bit harder to control. Regardless, I think that this scene in itself was a very good showing of what we can do with this mount and what its capabilities are. So when we talk about these guys right here, the first thing that stands out obviously is that these guys are very quick, being able to stay up and keep up with us even though we're on our mount. Another thing that really stands out is these guys are strong as hell. You see them yeeting some of the herbivores, like trying to hit us with them, and one of the things that I noticed is that like, you know, usually the herbivores will kind of like squirm and then they might get up or something after they get hit. No, these guys get yeeted and they're just dead. If you look at these guys' jaws, you can very much tell why they are dead in one shot. The visual effects in this trailer are absolutely fantastic. The sandstorm itself when it's coming up behind us as we're running away looks great, but then in future shots when you can tell the sandstorm is still going on, things are obscured, you can tell just by the color changes that things are kind of like covered in dust. They did a very, very good job of showing this in this shot right here. Outside of the sandstorm, there is also like a thunderstorm, lightning storm going on as well. And the strikes on the ground, those are going to take out so many hunters and I can't wait to be one of them. But genuinely, the strikes on the ground look fantastic. Even if you just scrub through the video and pause on certain spots, like the lightning in the sky, it all looks fantastic. Something that I was thinking about that would be very cool if it was the case. Maybe this thunderstorm that was coming on all of a sudden was started because there was a Kirin in the area. Not near us, it had such a wide area of effect that these thunderstorms are creeping as the Kirin's going along. That would be awesome. One of the things that I noticed as well was the spine on these herbivores, which I think would maybe be the alphas, the males, whichever. When they get struck by the lightning, it glows. And now, could this just be like a 
defense mechanism thing or just how they've survived these lightning storms over time. I don't know. But one of the things that really intrigues me about this is, you know, with Monster Hunter, you're making weapons, you're making armor, you need materials for those. And there are weapons and armor that need herbivore parts, things that you have to get from them from these small monsters. I'm wondering that if this gets struck by lightning, does it give you a different material than it usually would if the spine wasn't hit by the lightning or wasn't charged? That would be super cool if you could get specific weapons or armor made by a specific material that you get after the spine is struck. We then see our mount kind of doing like a parkour on these Coral Highlands-esque uh, landscapes, but it looks very, very smooth, and I like it. Speaking of smooth, the gliding as well, when they land on that final spot, it looks so good, and it's going to be so much fun jumping from the highest points and just gliding around the lands. I can't wait. One of the things that was pointed out in this scene, and shout out to Cordy for this, when the lightning hits one of the like spines coming out of the ground right behind us it kind of looks like there's a bit of like sigils or something engraved in it but it could just be a coincidence but i don't know some of those lines the thickness variety it kind of shows that like some type of sigil or something is lighting up as it gets struck now as we come upon the overlook and see this large area in the back you see a structure a huge structure and something tells me that's obviously going to have some significance to what's going on what our point is in this game but what it tells me is that there is going to be a gigantic massive wyvern in this game and i can't wait to see it i don't care if it's dalamadur something that we've had already or if it's something brand new and i'm very much looking forward to it because with the way that they've shown this game there is potential that we'll just be out and about on an expedition and we just look out in the distance and there's some massive wyvern or something just going across the land and just taking up so much space oh it's gonna be so beautiful now the next thing could possibly be a bit of a reach but i absolutely see the logic behind it when you look at that screen where it says monster hunter wilds look at wilds the way that it's reflected what does that make you think of for me it makes me think of like reflection in the water and like how it kind of fades at the end that's what it looks like to me and a lot of people are thinking maybe this is a hint towards underwater combat coming back i don't know for sure i think it might be a little bit of a reach but like i said the logic isn't too bad here so maybe it's a possibility the actual logo itself is super super cool and we see all the wyvern heads to represent that it's sixth generation but i would love for each of these wyverns to be represented by maybe like a new elder dragon or just a new wyvern in general but the two that are at the top and the bottom i'm thinking they are going to obviously have some bigger significance in the story or something i don't know it's just the logo who knows but that's kind of what i'm thinking and kind of what i'm hoping for now people are going to have differing opinions on this on what i bring up here but i'm so so excited that we got to see rathalos in this trailer and this is something that you guys can let me know down in the comments as well but i do not want a monster hunter game that does not have rathalos in it it actually goes beyond that i don't want one that doesn't have rathalos rathian and Diablos in it, but Rathalos is the main monster that I have that stipulation with. And if you guys feel the same way, let me know. If there's other monsters that make you feel that way, let me know too. But man, does Rathalos look so good good in this even the like markings on his wings oh it's just gonna be so glorious but i am i'm so happy he's here i felt like a sigh of relief when i got to see him so yeah gotta have the main staple in every single game overall this was just an absolutely fantastic fantastic trailer they did such a good job with just a minute and 30 seconds and this is the first bit of information that we're getting about this game most games they would have done some shitty 10 15 second cinematic trailer that didn't actually tell you anything or give you any kind of information and instead we got an entire trailer full of gameplay that gave us a lot of answers and raised a lot of questions they could not have done better with this trailer i loved it i've been watching it over and over and over again the past few days one of the things that i'm worried about i didn't see any palicos i did not see any palicos in this trailer but surely there has to be palicos right? 
If there's not, that'll be sad for sure, but everything that I saw in this trailer has me extremely hyped. I don't know how you guys feel. Even the monster roster, some of the monsters that feel like they're going to be definitely possible to come into this game now. Najarala, Gameth, some of the larger scale monsters. It feels like they really have a chance to be in this, and I love it. There are so many monsters that I've missed that can really come back. I'm not sure if it's going to be open world or like semi-open world, but I just genuinely do not care. That last scene that we got, the last shot of us overlooking, that showed how big of a scale this game is going to be, and that's good enough for me. But that's going to be it for this one, guys. I know it has been so long since we made a video, but we are back baby we are back and there's a lot of videos that i have in mind already as far as like speculation what monsters might be in the game yada 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 so expect more content guys it's been a long time i just couldn't make a video that i didn't have my heart in and right now i feel recharged revitalized and i appreciate you guys for hanging out and being so patient i love you guys you're the best and i will see you in the next video